Right, to make the box frame card, I'm going to be using the first edition Love Story papers because I spied this very nice wood effect paper. There's some lovely papers in here, as always, with first edition papers. They always have wonderful papers. But I really did like the look of that wood effect. So that's what we're going to use. So there's the paper. It's nice as well. It's got a linen fixture, a linen texture to it, and um, it's nice and thick. It's a 200, 200 GSM, I think it is. <clears throat> right, what we're going to do on your scoreboard. You need to score at. No, mine is back to front only because. Okay, I just need to explain this. This would be the normal way around that most people would do it. However, I struggle to find the notch because there's no little indent. Okay, so that's why I always do mine upside down. So just follow my measurements, don't necessarily follow the fact that I'm doing it back to front, okay? So, you're going to score at one inch, at one and a half inch, two and a half inches, and at three inches. You're then going to turn it, like that, and do the same again. So we're going to score at one inch, at one and a half inch, two and a half inch, and three inches. Oops. Turn it again and score it at one inch, one and a half inch, two and a half inch, and three inches. And then finally do it on the other side. So we're going to score at one inch, one and a half inches, two and a half inches, and three inches. Now while we're here, we're also going to, let me just turn it over a second. That doesn't really matter. Okay, so we're also going to just score down from four inches, which for you guys would be here, four inches down to this second line here. So I'm going to score down to there. So there's my second line. That's my first score line. There's my second score line. So I'm scoring from the four inch line down to there. And I'm also doing it at eight as well. Which on mine obviously it says four because I've got it reversed. But if you're working left to right, that's four inches in, that's eight inches in and to the second line. Then you want to turn it round completely because you're only doing it top and bottom, you're not doing it left and right. So turn it round completely and do the same again. So from your four inch line down to the second line and from your eight inch line down to the second line. Okay? So once you've done that, you now need to cut out if you count your boxes, you've got your boxes here one, two, three, four. So you want to cut from here, from this bit, all the way down. One, two, three, four. So you're going to cut this entire corner out. Okay. Now it feels weird because you say four by four, but it's, it just feels weird because you you feel like you've got more than four boxes there. But one, two, three, four boxes. One, two, three, four boxes. So across there and across there. And actually, if you put it on your thing, that's literally. It's, it's to your three inch line, so you're cutting three inches in and three inches down, and you're cutting that three inch, three by three square out. Okay, so you do that on all four sides. Same on this one, so you're cutting from three inches across and you're cutting down three inches. My cutting isn't the best. So all four corners.
And last corner. Oh, there we go. So you end up with that. So there's your four inch and your eight inch mark at the top. Right, now what you want to do is you're going to cut down from your four inch line, so here, you're going to cut down and you're going to cut that little two by one box off. So, let me just draw this in. So you're going to cut along there and up there. Down there, not very straight, and down there, but you see what I mean. Down here, and down here, down here, and down here. Oops, Daisy, that's not straight, but you can see what I mean. You're also going, let me move the scoreboard out of the way, because I don't need that anymore. You're also going to cut off, and I'm going to do it now, from there to there. That. So you can actually do the whole thing in one go if you want to, which is probably what I might do. But for those of you who want to do it step by step, so can you see that? I've cut down, down two, and then from that bit there, you're going to go to the corner here. Same on that side, same on this side. So although I've drawn two by two, so you can either do all your two by two, two by ones rather, your little, these bits here, and then do that bit, or you can just do the whole thing in one go. I'm going to do the whole thing in one go. So I'm just going to draw it in so you can see where I'm cutting. There we go. Okay. So we're going to cut that. To there, and then we're going to cut straight up to there. Down here. Across here. Like that. Okay, so you end up with that. What you can do is just make sure you fold all your crease lines. A really good crease. Like that looks a bit wonky. Why does that look wonky? I haven't quite done it quite right. That's wonky. side, to the other side. I'm also going to do these ones as well. I'm just going to fold these for now, just so that I've done them. This is quite, as I say, it's quite a thick card, and with the texture as well it is, <coughs> you really have to show it who's boss.
Right, now what you want to do, you can either use tape or you can use glue. I'm going to use tape just for these bits. I'm going to use glue a bit later on, but just for these bits here I'm going to use tape. So you want to stick some tape down. I'm going to do two lots because this is quite thin tape, so I'm going to stick a layer there and a strip on the other side as well. Stick a strip here. And then what you want to do is do so actually, peel your backing off. And then roll it over. So that it meets the other it makes the little thing. And then I would oh actually hang on. Stick them quite properly. I'd probably actually stick it like that, I think. Like that. And then fold it the other way. Yeah, that's better. So if you fold it flat like that and get it to stick under, that's probably the better way. Because if you try and stick it like this, I, I, I do struggle a bit. At least you can press it down nicely. And then you've got your little, little bar. Do the same on this side. And then I will just fold that over and then just stick that down and then also then press it the other way and just give it a good burnish because then that way it makes it nice and sturdy. So that's your two bars. Then you want to stick some tape on here. same again. So take off your backing. Now the beauty of this is because these fold flat you can kind of fold them out the way and because you press them down both ways you can kind of fold them out the way. Turn that over, stick that down and then just give it a bit of a, there we go. Okay, so that's going to go that way. Just make sure that's, yep, like that. Now we're going to glue these bits in a minute, so don't worry about the fact that they're wanting to undo themselves. Turn it round, do the same with this bit here. And then again, you want to fold that over. Now this time around, you might on your last one, you might just want to just get it in position and then stick it. Try and fold it flat. You might have a mm, might be all right. And sort of mine's a bit too wide. I've just realised my I haven't cut mine very well. Let's see if I can just trim that. Cause that I don't know if you can see that there, here and here, just needs a tiny bit off it, just a fraction off. You haven't cut up my folds quite right. I told you I wasn't very good at cutting, didn't I? <laughs> there we go. That should hopefully be better. That's a bit better. Right, that folds up and that folds up. And then I'm just going to put some glue underneath. That's not sitting quite as I want it. And 
Mm. My folds obviously haven't gone quite as well as I was hoping them to go, but anyway, <laughs> never mind. Right, so we're going to put some glue under here. Excuse me if I get my head in the way. I'm just trying to see where I'm putting my glue. Oh, the end of my glue, which is always helpful. I'm going to do all four corners before I actually stick them together. So I'm just literally going to put a bit of glue on all corners like that. I'm going to bring it up and I'm just going to hold it down like that. And just wait a second for it to. I'm trying to do the next pair of hands with this bit, but anyway, there we go. Just going to wait for a moment. As you can see, it's quite an easy, it's quite an easy box to do, really. I've seen other box frames online. I had to go at an origami box frame the other day, last night actually, and it looks quite good, but it was really quite difficult to do. So this was the box frame I did last night. <laughs> Just need to stick it into place. And I quite like it because it's quite chunky, but it was quite complicated. Whereas this isn't too bad. Right, just wait for my glue to stick and dry. Obviously, if you wanted to use tape on this bit, you could. Right. There we go. So there's your frame. So obviously, then you can put what you want in the middle. But I like the fact it's the wood wood effect. I think that's really rather cool. Right, to complete this card, we're going to use I'm gonna I'm gonna take a, a white square card blank. That will go on the back of the card so it stands up. Hands up, and then I've also cut another piece of the wood, which I'm going to put at the back of the card, so it kind of looks like it's an extension of the frame. So I'll remove that first. You could use obviously wet glue or you can use tape for this. I'm using tape because my wet glue is running out. I would normally use wet glue for this, but anyway. And a little tip if you do use tape, there's a little tip you can use so you don't end up having to stick things down and then you don't get it straight. Okay, so. What I do is, where you do it all, around, all the way around the outside, you then peel off the corner, like that, and fold it back on itself. And then you go into the opposite corner and do the same in the opposite corner. And then you put it down and you know that all of this isn't sticky and all of this isn't sticky. So you can use that to line up with your card. And then it means when you stick it down, you just stick your corners down and obviously the bit in the middle. But you know that's nicely lined up. Now you can see white, but that's just because this card blank is slightly bigger. Around the, um, it's not evenly folded in half. And then you simply peel your backing strips off, like that, and there you have a nicely lined up card blank. Right, and then that is going to stick on the front of there. Now then, 
for this I am going to use some wet glue because I really do want that to stick well. It's got a lot of weight on it and if we just use tape there might be areas that won't stick properly. So I'm going to use some wet glue on it. Make sure it's well stuck on because it's quite a. I mean, it's not heavy, it's just chunky. There we go. And also, it gives you a bit of wiggle room as well, so you can get it in the right place. chosen for the middle I've chosen some more of the love story papers quite like that but the, the, um, the decoupage look better on that one um, so the love story papers I've cut down to four by four because that's what size this is now you have to be careful when you I've cut it down before you I'd measure this just to make sure because where your folds obviously all, all your folds although you've followed the um, you know the score lines that, that were given your folds still might be slightly different just literally fractions out so I measured mine to 4x4 four four and it was just a little bit too big. So I've just trimmed it so that now is a, a very snug fit. And the same this way. Um, it's, it's Again, it's just a little bit snug but it's fine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and press that down and try and stick it underneath, you know, if I can, into the, into the corners, underneath the sides so that then we don't have bits that... Because I, I don't want a gap. I want it to sort of nicely snugly fit. So again, I'm going to wet glue it because again, that gives me a bit of time to wiggle it around and get it in the right place. So let's get that in. Like that. Press that down all the way around. There we go. A nice snug fit. I'm going to use the corner of my, this tweezer has got a nice little corner. I'm just going to go into that corner there to just sort of get it so that it goes underneath and fits nicely in the box frame. There we go. I'm happy with that. Now, because I've spun it around so many times, I need to make sure I've got it the right way up, which I have. There we go. And then I've just taken some, you can do anything, obviously you can do a stamp a scene or whatever you want to do, but I've just taken a bit of decoupage and obviously I've decoupaged it up and I've just put some pads on the back because I wanted it to be raised up from the back of the frame so I'm just going to fill the back it off stick that inside the frame like that and then I really liked the idea of having some little flowers on the outside now these flowers all come with wires and I never use the wires so just with a pair of scissors I'm just going to trim those off and they always leave a little bit of a length just in case the flower starts to unravel I don't think it ever will but I just you know <laughs> I just don't want it happening so I always leave about I don't know a centimetre of wire free and these bits of wire cutting off can come in handy for other things so I do sometimes keep my wire bits that I've cut off And then I'm going to use uh, a silicone glue. I'm using Kalau 3D glue, but you can use any kind of silicone glue. Um, I also tend to use um, the Dovecraft one as well. This is the first one I could lay my hands on today. Now, let's clear all the gunk away from the outside of it. And then I'm just going to squeeze a bit onto the back of the flower. Squeeze a bit onto the back. And stick that down there. I like the way that it's got the 
the mechanism on this. It's the, it's like the key mechanism for squeezing it out. That's helpful. Anything else down in underneath? Okay. There's my finished card. Obviously, you can add more stuff in it if you want to, or whatever. Um, I'm probably going to use this for a, a wedding card. But you could use it as a Valentine's card. Um, you can basically do what you want to do. I mean, you know, it's quite a sweet little, sweet little card. Obviously, you wouldn't send that in a normal envelope, and you probably wouldn't post it. You'd probably hand deliver that. That's a hand deliver card. Can hear all of you shouting at me you never get that in the post box no you probably wouldn't so what i would probably do is make a box um, envelope for it um, and that would be a hand delivered that would not i, I wouldn't post that <laughs> i wouldn't post that there's too many things delicate things on it but anyway there you go that's how you make a box frame card hope you enjoy it and hope to have you have a go